If I could help people understand anything about Afghanistan, I think I would start with beauty and courage. The beauty of the people, the beauty of the culture, the beauty of the land itself, because these are things often missed in our typical news. It's not that the violence, the difficulty, the oppression of women aren't all very real, but there is another side to the story. And when we miss out on that, we miss out on the hope of Afghanistan. It's not easy as a foreign woman to live and work in this country. Days can be very discouraging. But over and over, it was the courage displayed around me by Afghans risking and sacrificing for their own country that helped me to find new courage as well. One of my favorite stories was in following the progress of a midwifery training program and the development of a neonatal unit in western Afghanistan, because it showed so clearly the profound difference courage and women's education can have for men and women in so many areas of life. One of every eight Afghan mothers will die in childbirth this year. That's 60 times the number in the United States. Only 14% of women have a skilled attendant at their birth, and that includes everything from hospitals with nurses to women in remote villages with the assistance of midwives. Only 14%. Afghanistan has the second highest under five mortality rate in the world. I stepped into the one room neonatal unit just as Naima finished resuscitating a baby. So many babies were delivered with nothing, she told me. No resuscitation, no oxygen, no medicines, and they would just die, but now we have the tools to help them live. This room is the only one of its kind in the region with two incubators, one resuscitation unit, oxygen, three bassinets, and midwives trained to run it. It seems so simple, and yet within the first six months of being opened, they were able to save the lives of 763 babies. Shakila, another graduate of the midwifery training program, told me that the mothers call this the life room. Before, the mothers would see their babies born dead and say there was nothing to do but go home. I would explain to them about this room and they became happy. Now, the mothers ask me to bring their babies here. I attended the graduation of over a dozen midwives who'd come for training from four surrounding provinces, after which they would return home to be some of the few trained health workers in their villages. These women risked their safety, their families' reputations, investing time and money, believing the investment and sacrifice was worth seeing the deaths of mothers and children decrease. I once asked a doctor why education and healthcare were important to the future in Afghanistan. His response was this, if the world wants to help my country, if they care about making this country better, they will concentrate on newborns, mothers, and children. These children will be the new doctors and hospital staff. They will become the bosses and maybe even one day the president. The good condition of our schools and our hospitals helps us create good people, good families, making better neighborhoods and a better country. Because of people like this, I never cease to believe that there is hope for Afghanistan.